Welcome to the Weekly Dose Podcast, your one-stop shop for the weekly news in incretin mimetic therapies with your host, Man on the Majaro, Dave Knapp. Welcome to another edition of the Weekly Dose Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Knapp, Man on the Manjaro. That's why I am here. You are on the pen. That's why you're here. Wigovis, Extenda, Victoza, Trilicity, Manjaro's Upbound, Compound, that pen. And it's what we talk about here. Every week, we talk about the news in incretin mimetics and obesity therapies, type 2 diabetes. And we're going to get into it here on this Tuesday, August 20th edition of the Weekly Dose Podcast. But before we do, I wanted to invite you all uh, to help me out with something. If you've enjoyed this podcast, the Iowa Podcast Awards has on the pen up for a couple awards this year, which is super exciting. But one of those awards is the People's Choice Awards. And if you go over to iowapodcastawards.com forward slash vote, the link will be in the description of this video. Uh, You can scroll down and vote for the Weekly Dose Podcast for the People's Choice Award. If you'd love to help us out, we would love for you to do that. Uh, And they would love to hear from you at the Iowa Podcast Awards. So if you've enjoyed the podcast, that's one way you can help. Of course, you can always give us a five-star rating and review. That helps to move this podcast along in the podcast world as well. But let's get into the needy gritty. We got a lot to talk about this week. Lots of news floating around in the GLP-1 world. Uh, We're going to stay a a little bit away from the compound topic this week. We've been hammering that the last couple of weeks. There's not a ton of news uh, that has evolved since all the cease and desist letters. I think things are sort of quieting down. There's an equilibrium hitting. And I think that a lot of companies are continuing to move forward uh, with their compound terzepatide. And the companies that received the warnings have duly noted those warnings. Uh, But there's an interesting article that I wanted to tell you about in Wired. And this article sort of covers some of the additional benefits of GLP-1 therapies and similar medications. I think the interesting thing here is that the world is really starting to, to talk about the things that we've been talking about for two years on this channel. Uh, So as I read this article, of course, you have things in there about kidney studies and the heart failure studies for uh, Wegovy. But a couple of things that were dropped into this article that I thought were really interesting were a couple studies, and they are a little bit older, but smaller studies on a couple of topics that we haven't really talked about much on this channel. The first one is in Parkinson's disease. Now, this was a small study done in patients with Parkinson's disease taking lixazenatide. Lixazenatide was sort of a derivative of the Exendin-4 uh, peptide, which was the Gila monster venom, right? If you haven't heard that story, you got to go back and check out the videos that we've done on that. But yes, Gila monster venom is where we got our original Exendin-4 peptide turned into Exenatide and lixazenatide, another uh, sort of derivative. Anyway, a small French study involving 156 early stage Parkinson's patients tested lixacinatide, uh, which is a daily GLP-1 agonist. And what they found is that patients who received the GLP-1 treatment saw no worsening of their motor symptoms like tremors, balance issues, slowness, stiffness. And in contrast, people who received placebo saw worsening symptoms over that same time period. So this study suggests that GLP-1 therapies like lixacinatide, which was used here, may slow the progression of Parkinson's disease. Uh, a lot of further research is needed But that was a really interesting takeaway from this specific article. There was also information about a small study testing uh, folks who were dependent on opioids, fentanyl particularly. In 2019, it was a pilot study done at Penn State where uh, researchers tested liraglutide, which is another daily GLP-1 agonist, Saxenda victosa. Very similar uh, chemical structure to semaglutide, uh, but a daily shot. And basically what they saw was that users uh, were given a specialized app uh, to report cravings for uh, using opioid drugs. And what they found is that when they used their app to report uh, the cravings at the end of the study, there was a 40% reduction in opioid cravings in those taking liraglutide versus those on placebo. Again, this was used a, using a smart app on their phone to report Uh, these cravings. The study did not follow participants beyond the treatment facility, uh, so it's not certain whether it actually actively reduced opioid use uh, or relapse rates, but this was obviously some really interesting information 
for anyone who knows anyone who has struggled with addiction and anyone who knows anyone who has used GLP-1 medications, we know that these medications have a profound impact on those sort of uh, addictive behavior impulses. We've heard everything at On The Pen from uh, less frequent trips to uh, to the gas station to get a six pack of beer to less frequent trips to the casino to gamble, everything in between. It's just amazing uh, what these medications will do. And these were some of the early studies uh, that showed just another interesting article, not necessarily news, but this was definitely news to me about Orforglipron. Now, Orforglipron, as you may remember, is the small molecule pill in trials at Eli Lilly. Uh, this is a potential to be a huge blockbuster, right? Because this oral formulation, uh, they've seen weight loss in phase three trials, similar to Wagovi. So we're getting close to in the injectable uh, sort of efficacy with Orforglipron. Well, back in 2018, Roche, and you may remember them because we've covered them quite a bit lately for their, uh, their um, acquisition of Carmot Therapeutics, which has a whole line of obesity and diabetes medications, including oral GLP-1s. Uh, that was earlier in, or sorry, I think it was late 2023, early 2024, somewhere in that window. Of course, we've covered it here. Uh, but interestingly, what we see here is that in 2018, Roche chose not to exercise its right of first refusal to purchase or Forglipron, which was then known as OWL 833. Uh, OWL 833 was in development from a company called Chugai, which is a Japanese company with which Roche had a partnership. So they had first right of refusal on Orforglipron or OWL 833 at the time. And Lilly acquired Orforglipron at that time for $50 million. They rebranded OWL 833 to Orforglipron, started calling it Orforglipron and starting running the trials there. Uh, obviously, we know that Orforglipron is still in clinical trials phase three now, but it's expected to generate $50 billion in global revenue within six years of its launch. So think about that. They are going to within, you know, the this period of 2018 to 20, let's say 2032, I think. Uh, in that period, they will have taken a $50 million investment and turned it into $50 billion. So uh, it's interesting. The article kind of goes into a little bit of detail on Roche's decision to pass on Orforglipron. And obviously, it considers it a huge missed opportunity uh, to have this potential blockbuster drug. But then you saw the acquisition of Carmot Therapeutics, which we've covered both at OnThePen.com and on this YouTube channel. They've got some exciting ones in the pipeline, but I know that they are really kicking themselves on having missed out on Orforglipron, which will be an absolute game changer when it comes to market for a couple of reasons. Obviously, you get, you get a, a pill form where you get injectable level results. It's a small molecule versus a peptide, uh, so no cold, no cold storage, greater bioavailability, uh, and you have a company like Eli Lilly who is very adept at making small molecule medications. So very interesting uh, miss from Roche, but Roche is still exciting to follow nonetheless with that acquisition of Carmont Therapeutics, and they've got some really early stage uh, um, candidates there that I think are really going to be exciting. So you have to go over, I'll, I'll link in the description of the show notes here, but if you want to check out what Roche is doing with Carmont Therapeutics, we'll link that in the description as well. And in a word from our new sponsor, Ro, of course, we've been talking a ton on this channel about the accessibility issues behind GLP-1 medications and how really uh, with the release of the vials and the expansion of of Lily's offering of branded medication. Uh, obviously, the next step in that battle is to make sure that our, our companies that we work for who are providing the medical plans are aware of the obesity coverage rider that exists with many insurance policies. And we want to be advocating, right? We want to be advocating with those uh, employers to add obesity coverage. Now, We've obviously created some resources and tools for you to use over at onthepen.com if you do not have uh, coverage. But maybe, perhaps, if you're just stumbling upon this channel, just stumbling upon GLP-1s and you found On The Pen, maybe you don't even know how to find out or how to look for that information. Maybe you do, but the co 
the telephone calls with the insurance companies are so cumbersome, you'd rather somebody else do the work for you. That's where Rose GLP-1 Insurance Covered Checker comes in. This is a phenomenal tool available at Rowe. You don't have to be a member of Rowe to use it. Uh, but basically, you go to rowe.co forward slash checker, and it's going to take you to this web page where you're just going to fill out some basic information about your insurance uh, and your personal information. You're going to send that off to Rowe. They're going to do the work for you, and then they're going to send back a report. In that report is going to be essentially what you're covered for, right? And I did this for myself. Obviously, I don't have obesity coverage, but it did show the medications that I do have covered. It shows what the medication will cost. And then even better, they've layered on top of it their, uh, their supply tracker tool. So there's also reporting in there about what the current FDA status for the availability of that medication is. Uh, that's the GLP-1 insurance checker tool if you missed it. And uh, you find that that may be valuable to you. You got to go back and check that out. Of course, we had Z Ritano, CEO of Roe, was on on the pen this past week talking about this tool, made an exceptional offer to the GLP-1 uh, community watching on the pen. So you'll have to go back and check that out. But really an awesome, awesome thing from Roe that they're offering in the insurance checker tool. Of course, if you're hearing about GLP-1s and you're interested in gaining access to them yourself, think they might be for you. You can check that out via Rose pro program, Row Body. So Row pairs a weekly shot with healthy lifestyle changes so that you can lose up to 15 to 20% of your weight in a year on average. Just think about that. Those are incredible, incredible numbers. Uh, on average, 10 to 15% of your body weight in a year. So basically what you're going to do, hundreds of thousands of people have already taken advantage of this. They use Row to help them uh, get access to their GLP-1 medications uh, to a great plan under Roe Body to help them achieve what they're looking for. With Roe, you'll have support throughout the process. Uh, Roe's partner handles all of the insurance uh, paperwork for you, so you don't have to worry about that angle of it. And if you're eligible for prescription medications, you'll have access to your provider on demand. If you have any questions, really slick app that they have where you can just communicate with them right within the app. Plus, one of the best parts of Roe, you can do this all, sign up from it all from the comfort of your couch. That's my favorite part. Uh, very, very approachable. Uh, very, very accessible for people who uh, need access to GLP-1 medications. Uh, sign up today at row.co forward slash OTP. Uh, you'll pay just $99 for the first month and then $145 after that, plus the cost of medication. That's row.co forward slash OTP. Check it out. Let them know that you're thankful that they are sponsoring on the pen. In other news, Novo Nordisk announcing some more big investments in manufacturing of the pharmaceutical ingredients of their drugs. So check this out. They're rapidly ex expanding manufacturing for GLP-1s. We already know this, making uh, investments in the United States even. Uh, but this over in Denmark. And so essentially what they're doing is they're investing 1.5 billion Danish kroner, which is $220 million to build a new API plant in Denmark. Uh, the facility will create 50 jobs and is set to be completed by 2027. The plant will be an 8,000 square meters, 86,000 square feet, and will include production, storage, office, and lab spaces, and hopefully a lot of fire extinguishers. <laughs> if you know, you know. The site will produce raw materials for Novo Nordisk medicines against chronic disease. And so that would presumably include the suite of GLP-1 medications, semaglutide, perhaps Cagrisema coming out in the near future. Uh, they're also investing $4.1 billion into a new fill finish plant in Clayton, North Carolina. You know, Clayton, North Carolina, this is going to be a separate topic uh, coming up. Sorry, the, the lighting keeps changing. The sun keeps going down on me. Uh, but essentially what you got is, is massive investments in North Carolina. And these investments are, are really interesting when you think about the fact that the North Carolina public health program for their pub, uh, public employees does not include access to these medications for obesity. So I think that if you live in the state of North Carolina and you work for the state of North Carolina and you don't have access, I think you got a pretty strong case for uh, them potentially adding this down the line, considering the investments, the major investments that both Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk have made in these North Carolina plants. And finally this week, the Atlantic had an interesting article. We started the article or started the uh, podcast off this week talking a little bit about some of the topics that are big in the world of non-GLP-1, uh, like these news articles that are getting out into the world. They're topics that we've talked about 
uh, many, many times for the last couple of years on this channel. But this article was all about people splitting doses of the upper doses of Manjaro, taking the pens apart, extracting the medicine out, and then basically making their shots last longer. In other words, a loophole where somebody on the who maybe requires the 7.5 milligram uh, will have the 15 milligram prescribed. They actually take the pen apart, extract the medicine and take half of it one week and half of it the next. This basically cuts the cost of their medication in half. Of course, this was a big uh, sort of poo-pooing of the release of vials is that people will split the doses. And of course, we told you long, long ago that likely what they were likely to do is release the smaller doses that weren't as easy to split. And that's exactly what you saw with the release of the vials this past uh couple of weeks here is that they're releasing at least initially the 2.5 and the 5 milligrams of ZEP bound in single dose vials to expand accessibility. Uh, still really good thing for access uh, to branded medications. This is really good that they're increasing the supply of branded medications. It doesn't appear right now uh, that there is any imminent threat to the compounded versions. I said we weren't going to talk about this, but it seems that there isn't any real inherent threat because the FDA has yet to take them off the shortage list. They are listed as available, but the FDA still currently considers terzepatide in shortage. So for the time being, seems like we're safe. Of course, we'll continue to report on all that. That's why it's so important to stay in touch with On The Pen. Hit that like button, but make sure you hit the bell notification and the subscribe button if you're on uh, YouTube. Make sure you download this podcast, give it a five-star rating and review so you can stay on top of all the news as it comes out because what we're talking about today, other channels will be talking about tomorrow, the next week, and the mainstream media will be talking about in about six to eight months. So you're going to get it here first at On The Pen. That's why we're here. Thank you for having uh, me into your speakers today, or if you're watching on YouTube, into your home and listening to this podcast. Again, a five-star rating and review is super, super helpful to the podcast. And if you wouldn't mind jumping over to the Iowa Podcast Awards forward slash iowapodcastawards.com forward slash vote, vote for On The Pen for the Viewer's Choice Awards. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being the best part of what we do at On The Pen. We've got a great show lined up for you this Thursday night. Jack LeMay, the GLP-1 TikTok sensation, will be joining us for a fun episode of On The Pen live on Thursday, 9 p.m. Central. It always happens there. Make sure you follow us for that reason. Until next week, we will see you on the next one. Have a great day.